Hi, I'm Simeon Franklin. I'm a Python instructor here at Maracana, and I'm coming to you from Maracana Studios. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the Django tutorial and best practices in setting up your Django environment. One of the great things about being a Django developer is the awesome docs, and that includes the tutorial. If you're like me and hundreds of other developers, you probably got your start by going through the Django tutorial. But if you've gained a little bit of experience, you may have noticed that the tutorial doesn't always follow best practices in describing how to set up your project and install Django itself. So today, I'd like to give you a couple of examples that'll make your life easier when you create new projects with Django. So the first example of a best practice uh, that I'd like to give you is installing Django itself. If you got your start on the tutorial, you'll notice that the tutorial assumes that you've got Django installed already. Uh, and if you actually followed the link in the documentation to installing Django, you'd notice that the, the first way they recommend you install Django is to download the zip file with the version of Django you want and run the setup included setup.py file. That's definitely not the best way to do it, and I'll kind of explain the benefits of using a couple of other tools to manage your Django installations, but I'd like to show you by example. So I'm at my console, and I'm in an empty folder. I want to use a tool called virtualenv, and I can install virtualenv with easy install. Easy install ships with setup tools if you've got Python installed on a Mac or a Linux. You've already got easy install. If you're on Windows, you might have to download uh, the setup tools installer yourself, and you can find that at pypy.python.org. Just search for setup tools and download the Windows installer. So I'm using the command easy install to install virtual env. And you'll notice I've already got it installed on my box. If I didn't, it would download and install it. I'm, I'm going to use the installed virtual env command to create a new virtual environment. I'm going to call it Django. And you'll notice what that did is created a brand new Python executable in Django slash bin slash Python. If I look in my current directory, I have a new directory called Django. And Django is going to be a virtual environment. It'll contain Python uh, modules instead of my global site packages. New code that I install with easy install will end up in my virtual env. It also has a binary folder so that programs that I install, I can live there instead. I can. activate a virtual env. I'm just noticing I had the previous one um, still activated. I can activate a virtual env by using the source command under bash and running a script called activate. If you're on uh, Mac, this would be the same way. If you're on Windows, activate is actually a batch command, so you're just running a Windows batch file. But when I run the script, you'll notice that my, my prompt changes, and it reflects the virtual environment that's currently activated. And if I check to see what Python would run right now, you notice instead of the globally installed Python executable, it's a Python executable that's in my Django subdirectory. So now if I use easy install again, I don't need to use sudo because I'm not going to install something globally. I'm going to install it locally into this particular virtual env. And I want to install uh, Django. Let's just make sure Django is not installed. OK, I have no Django. So I'll use the easy install command to install Django. And let's install version 1.3. 1.4 was just released, but let's say I still want to use 1.3. And easy install goes to PyPy, the cheese shop, the repository for Python packages, finds the Django page, points itself to uh, the Django communities, hosting, downloads the appropriate version, and is running the setup.py itself, but it's installing it in my local site packages folder. Uh, now if I run my Python command to import Django, it runs without error. And you can also see, if I say which Django admin pi, so the utility script that we use to create new projects, it's not a globally installed Django admin. Again, it's just installed in a subdirectory. So let's go ahead and start a project. And I'll call it example. Now, why would we want to use this method of installation instead of uh, globally installing Django. If I wanted to run two different versions of Django, for instance, 1.3 and the brand new 1.4 to test out my project, and I globally install Django, I can only have one version at a time. Using virtual ems lets me kind of effortlessly switch between an installed set of libraries. Um, and 
the second practice I wanted to discuss that the tutorial um, kind of glosses over is the project itself. I'm going to go into the project I just created and look at my settings.py file. Your settings file has a variety of places where the documentation recommends using an absolute file path. So for instance, if I want to use an SQLite database, I can come down and specify SQLite 3 as my database engine. And then I'm supposed to specify a absolute path to a database file to use. Like that. I'm going to make my manage.py executable and run syncdb and see if it can see my database. Uh, syncdb. And I won't bother to install a user right now. And if you look where I specified, there's the database file that's created. And it's actually important to use absolute paths in a variety of places. Your template dir setting uses absolute paths. Your media, various of your media settings use absolute paths. Uh, your SQLite database string is supposed to be an absolute path. But it's kind of unfriendly to specify, to hard code in a path that's specific to my machine and my settings file. But if I'm working with another developer and want to share my project, if his, um, if his or her file setup isn't exactly like mine, the project wouldn't run. So another uh, common best practice in your settings file is to take advantage of the Python magic variable underscore underscore file underscore underscore. It looks like this. And Python includes this in every Python module. And it's the absolute path to the currently executing file. So that's almost what I want. And a little bit of manipulation from the OS module should get me what I want. So the os.path.durname function will get me the uh, directory portion of an absolute file name. And absPath makes sure that I'm actually getting an absolute path. And given this new variable I've created called dir, any place in my settings file that I'm supposed to use an absolute path, I'm going to use dir instead. And probably a better practice would be to use os.path.join to join my file components in a uh, cross-platform way. So I'll do that and delete the database that I created and run syncdb again to make sure that I've got everything right. And you'll notice this time uh, I've got it created in the current directory, but in a platform independent way. Uh, this, is, this is best practice for Django settings files, and this means that another developer can use my project without having to tweak all the paths. And I'd encourage you to use this um, for your database settings if you're choosing to use SQLite for, um, for your development. But also look at your template dir settings, for instance. The comments suggest absolute paths that are strings like home, HTML, Django templates. Again, if we can know the relative position of our template dirs, we can do things like this instead. And I suppose, again, to be cross-platform, I should use the os.path.join to put together my file component. So any place in my settings file that I'm using absolute paths, I'd rather use my constructed uh, dir variable. So that's just two examples. Um, there's a few more. It's worth looking at things like your URLs file uh, suggests that you hard code in the project name. And that's a, that's a bad idea. It's worth looking at the practices recommended in the default 
project and app creation of Django and in the tutorial with a, a somewhat critical eye, best practices will make your life uh, a lot easier if you're collaborating with other developers or if you're writing, um, if you're writing your code for somebody else's consumption. The Django documentation is great, and I'm not actually criticizing the tutorial. But if you do follow these best practices, they'll make your life easier, particularly if you collaborate with other developers or if you intend to write more than one Django project or application. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out our website for more great content. Hope to see you in class one day.